And as I dug a little bit deeper, I realized that one of the biggest issues with these cars when you're going to try to push it is going to be your fuel system. The S6, the S7, they all have um, a smaller fuel controller and don't put out as much fuel on the RS7s. You're not immune. You'll see why we're changing out the low pressure fuel feed to the high pressure units and thrown in an auto tech high pressure fuel pump upgrade in a few minutes we'll show you how and show you why so here's how i did it it's logical sense to upgrade your fuel system on stage one and stage two you're probably not doing that much to the fuel system but it doesn't matter whether in my opinion you have an rs7 or an S8, it still makes sense to upgrade the fuel system. On my car, I have an A8, and I'm gonna be upgrading the high pressure fuel pumps with the AutoTech kit, but I think you gotta go further than that, and let me explain why. Right here is the fuel feed line to the fuel injectors, and we've got that on, here's the passenger side, and here it is on the driver's side, right? The fuel feed to the fuel injectors. And then if we come back here, we have a 5 16 fuel line feeding the pump down here. That's not necessarily important. But then this fuel pump is being fed off of this fuel pump. So what we have is we have fuel coming in, coming into passenger side fuel pump and then being distributed down through and look how small this line is in comparison so just measuring this line that fuel line this crossover feed to this driver side fuel pump is a full two millimeters smaller than the feed to the injectors so you're coming in on this fuel pump and then reducing the size of the fuel line, coming down, and then turning, bending, turning, bending, turning, bending again, coming, turning, bending, coming up, and then finally feeding this high pressure fuel pump over here before then it increases in the fuel line size and then goes and feeds the injectors. I've gone and looked at tons of logs and even on an RS7, you go and you notice that the high pressure fuel pump in many cases can withstand the load, but it is the low pressure fuel side that goes and takes a hit and the low pressure fuel pump values just plummet. So this just makes sense. Let's eliminate this small reduced line. Let's give each pump its own feed and that's why I suggest going and getting an aftermarket fuel line kit. To get us that extra room of removing the air box, we're going to pop up these tabs that are located for this vanity cover. We're gonna move that out of the way to then expose the T20 uh, screws that are located here and here. We're going to pull those out and then that should help us get our air box out of the way. Now we've given ourselves a lot of breathing room to get in there and get to that fuel line. Okay now that we're in here we want to go and move our wiring harness a little bit to give us a bit more room. We want to unplug all of the solenoids moving all the way back. There's going to be a 10 millimeter anchor nut up top and then one back here in the back that we're going to remove along with the vacuum line which is located up here in the front. In case you didn't know on how to take these out. 
this tab right here pulls up. So I left one plugged in to show us. Most of us know, but here we go. Let me zoom in here. Give you a really good right here. Snap, it pops up, push in, and it's just going to come out. So I'm going to take off those 10 millimeter nuts and get our harness a little bit further out of the way. So we remove the wiring harness to give ourselves room to get to this line. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I'm just giving as much information so you can have an educated idea on what you're getting into. This is the line that feeds in. It comes down here and then turns into a steel line and then comes in here. We're going to take this off. All right. This was the fuel feed right here. So we have removed that and we're going to cap this off, but let's continue in our fuel line uh, install. Okay. Let me swing this line a little bit out of the way. This is the fuel line coming from the tank. This is the body side. Here's where they connect. You can see the movement right now, right? Where I'm moving this line in. You want to take the slack out like I did. That allow this plunger to go up and then it comes off in one fellow fellowed swoop. So what happens, you're going to take the tension off, push the plunger, hold it, and then take them both off at the same time. That was a one cut, thought I was going to look like an idiot, but now we've disconnected the body side from the motor side. So now we have that, we're ready to go to the next step. What I'm going to do, and you don't necessarily need to do it, but I'm just going to disconnect the fuel line completely. Down here, it's a one-time use clip. If uh, if you can see it, I don't know, I don't think you can, because I think I'm zoomed in. It's just down here. Just going to remove this, get this fuel line, out of the, fuel line out of the way, and go to the next step. All right, so we've removed our fuel line from the body side. We've removed our fuel line from this crossover line right here. Crossover line that comes to here to where what we're doing is we're going to put on our transition fitting. This. So what's happening here is we have this fitting that separates and what we're going to do here is we are going to convert from the Audi style fuel line. This collar right here slips over this collar and in here, I don't know if you can see it, which you're not going to be able to see it, but there's multiple stages of O-rings that are going to help it seal. So this next step, we're going to slide this collar this is a 15 millimeter uh, that you're going to put on there. We're going to slide this collar over here and then we're going to push this top part snug over, making sure to push it straight down. And then we're going to tighten them together, get a nice snug fit here, right? This is going to be 18 millimeters. That's going to be 15 millimeters. We're going to put a tighten on this and then we're going to head to that next step. Most all write-ups are going to show you how to do that on an RS7 or an S6. This is an A8. It's going to be a little bit different, but I'm going to splice in how we do the, uh, the upgrade. So for this particular situation on an A8, this is difference by this fuel feed line. On the sides, 
there's tabs here and here. You're going to have to use a tool to get in and compress this, which I've already done. You're going to squeeze, and then the fuel line comes up. Right here, I put the supply JHM uh, and fitting on. So we're going to that next step, which is going to be installing the fuel lines themselves. We already did the conversion, putting the fitting on, converting from the stock fuel line to the AN. So now what we have is three lines and a set of fittings. So I'm going to show you how those go on right now. But just for reference, the smallest line with no end uh, difference is going to go on the body feed. This will be the crossover to the passenger side. And this will be the uh, connection to the passenger side. Let me show you how all that works. Take this first fuel line, the smallest one. And it just wraps right in here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hand tighten this real quick. Really simple. And that's going to allow us to feed our fuel line in and hook up to that crossover part. So now that we have this here, this is where we're going to put in the splitter. The splitter feeds in right here. We're going to quickly thread that in, right? So now what we've accomplished here is we've taken the fuel line, now we have a splitter, and over here we have this, this used to be the feed line, right? So we're going to remove this barbed fitting. This barbed fitting comes out, fitting one. And then up here, right here, we're going to remove this fuel hose at a much reduced. All right. We're going to want to obviously cap off. Take this, it's a 16 millimeter with a the rubber gasket on it. We're going to thread that in. 16 millimeter. You don't have to go crazy tight. Snug plus a little bit. And then now we removed our barbed fitting from up here because we're converting from the barbed fitting to an AN style. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to thread this in. We're going to thread it in here. Let's thread this in. And then now what, what you can see is you can see the intelligent design. The fuel line has come and now we have a splitter. And then I move this just to keep some stuff out of the way. We're soft installing this at the moment, but then our next move is going to be to connect these two together. What I found best was when we're connecting this line, don't connect this to the feed. You want as much maneuverability here to thread that on. And then for myself, when it comes to connecting it back to the line, I chose the inside one and found that that gave me that gave me the best angle leaving plenty of room for putting on the longer line. All right, we're going to hop over here to the uh driver's side. We're going to screw in other fitting to convert from the um barbed fitting same thing over here we took out the barbed fitting and then we screwed in our an fitting to make that conversion and when we're tightening these fittings down 
19 millimeters going to work best. That's sorted out. We're going to take that long fuel line that I was showing you. This long fuel line right here that came with the kit. And we're going to feed it all the way over there. We're going to feed it in front of the intercooler here. Here it is underneath the a secondary air injection combi valve if you have it and then let's try to get a good angle here sorry and then just gonna take get that angle right thread it on there go ahead and just real easily Thread this on there, right? I removed this for the time being. Sorry, there's a ton of stuff in the way. And then, now, there's a certain reason I did it this way. We snake this line, this really long fuel line, and then it comes back here to the Y. So I did this a specific way for a specific reason, right? So here's the Y. What I wanted to achieve was I want this fuel line to pull this away from obviously the heat source. The way you do that is the way this Y is orientated. If I, I don't know if you can see where my hands out oh, shit. To get this to go, if I do it this way, it takes and it pulls the fuel line a little bit more out of the way versus if I hooked it up to this side it would have a tendency to pull the fuel line back in that direction. So take a little bit of the load off take your time with ANs Starting to thread that on, and then, then obviously, right here, the, these are 18, and these actual fittings are 19, as we start to tighten it down. Now, if you're not doing the, the high-pressure fuel pump upgrade, you're all set. Go ahead and feed your fuel line, whatever, however best suits you. Like I said, you know, I we have it here, so now we can get this out of the way and and put everything back together. We that's how we route it. So move this out of the way. Put everything back together. Y you don't need to remove all these things. I'm simply doing that to try to help give you the best landscape so you can see the easiest way to get in here. Now if you want to, obviously, you can remove as much as you wish, but whether it was getting to some of these things, I'd rather move quite a bit of it out of the way and let you decide what roadmap is going to best work for you. Uh, as I go and put the tightening on these, it, uh, it, it tucks in there pretty good. So that and then obviously as I just showed you I removed this line for the reinstall but that's pretty much it now I'm gonna go and move on to rebuilding the and upgrading the high pressure pump